Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'll take a look at another one of these hacker boxes. This time, I've got the Cypherpunk box. So, if you've never heard of hacker boxes, basically they put together these curated collections of items related to hacking and making that revolve around some kind of theme. And the theme of this one, being Cypherpunk, means that we can expect to find items related to things like cryptography and digital privacy. They usually also come with a microcontroller board of some kind, and various other electronic components or maker-related things. So if you like my videos, you'll probably like these boxes as well. Now, full disclosure, they did send me this box for free so that I could make this video, but I'm not being paid to say anything or give a positive review. In fact, I reached out to them in the first place because I already knew that I liked their boxes. Anyway, let's open this thing up already and see what's inside. First we have an Electronic Frontier Foundation badge. EFF is a nonprofit that focuses on supporting digital rights issues. So if you're interested in things like privacy and free speech, as you should be, then I definitely recommend looking into EFF. And a badge like this is just a good opportunity to bring it up to other people. And it is an iron-on badge, it's not a sticker, so you can iron it onto your backpack or laptop case or something. Next, there's a Privacy Badger sticker. And Privacy Badger is a browser plugin that blocks ads that try to track you online. What I think is cool about Privacy Badger is that their goal isn't to block all ads, only the ones that try to violate your privacy. Because in reality, those are two different things. You can block trackers from collecting everything you do online without blocking all visible ads, which some sites depend on to stay in business. Next, there's a Tor sticker. I'm sure most of you have heard about Tor, probably in the context of the dark web or some shady criminal underground stuff. But the reality is that Tor is just a tool for encrypting your internet traffic, and it makes it really difficult to tell where you're sending data to or where you're receiving data from. While it does get used for illegal things, it also gets used by perfectly law-abiding citizens who just don't want corporations and governments to record every single website they visit. And it's also used as an anti-censorship tool in countries where freedom of speech isn't a protected right. Next is this little 4x4 keypad. So this is a digital keypad that you can add to your electronic projects anytime you need some user input. This might be good, for instance, if you want to add a passcode to unlock something. The box also comes with an STM32 development board called the Black Pill. This board will be really familiar to you if you've ever seen the Blue Pill boards because they're basically the same thing but these have a slightly different pin configuration, and they've fixed an issue with the USB interface. If you've never heard of these STM32 boards before, you can think of it like an Arduino, except these pack quite a bit more power. They run a Cortex-M3, which is a 32-bit ARM processor that clocks in at 72 megahertz. For memory, they have 20 kilobytes of RAM, and for storage, they have 64 kilobytes of flash. It also comes with an ST-Link version 2 programmer. So this provides a USB interface for programming and debugging STM8 and STM32 chips. You can use this to program that black pill board over USB. And in fact, you can even do that from the Arduino IDE. So this is a really useful thing to have for working with these STM chips. The box also contains a 2.4 inch screen. This is a 240 by 320 pixel full color display, and it's accessible over a common SPI interface. This means that you can connect this screen to that black pill board and make your own portable video games, use it as a debugging console, or just add some kind of user interface to your project. This should be a lot of fun to build stuff with, and I'll probably do an entire video just about these screens and the black pill after this video. Next, there's a pair of U2F0 authentication key kits. 
This is a surface mount soldering kit where if you solder it together correctly, you'll end up with your own two-factor authentication key. Two of them actually. And these are really cool because they use private key cryptography to make your logins more secure than just using a password. Someone would essentially have to steal this physical device in order to log in as you, as opposed to just having to steal your password somehow. I won't solder them together in this video because I think it would make this too long, but I do want to do a video about these sometime soon too. Up next, the box contains a set of jumper wires. And here's where I keep assorted lengths of wire. You can never have too many of these, especially if you do a lot of prototyping and breadboard stuff. Speaking of breadboards, it also comes with one of those too. So this is great for when you want to wire some things together and see how they work. I'll probably use these with that black pillboard and the screen so I can wire it all together on the breadboard without having to solder anything. But if you do want to solder your prototypes together so that they're a bit more permanent, the box also comes with this perf board. And this one's pretty large, but what I like to do is just dremel out a score line and then you can break these down to the size that you want. And finally, the box comes with a bunch of different camera covers. So if you're not using your laptop camera or even your cell phone camera, you can cover it up so that even if your device were compromised, it couldn't be used to remotely spy on you. This might sound paranoid, but the reality is that vulnerabilities are discovered every day. And there are criminals out there who might want to try to blackmail you or steal sensitive information, so it doesn't hurt to cover up your camera when it's not in use. These stickers are removable vinyl, so they won't leave a residue over your camera either. And this one actually swivels so that you can cover and uncover your camera whenever you want. Pretty cool stuff. Anyway, that's the Cypherpunk Hacker Box. I've left a link in the description if you want to check it out for yourself, as well as a link to the previous Hackerbox video I did if you're into this kind of stuff. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel, and until next time, bye!